I am working as a uh, advocate for my student cluster from the last six years, close to. Uh, today, uh, we will discuss about NDP clusters and some of its features and how to set up the uh, clusters. This is a uh, safe purpose statement. <coughs> we will discuss mainly uh, what is special with MySQL clusters, MySQL cluster architecture and when to consider MySQL clusters, set up NDP clusters and the resources. Let's discuss what is special with MySQL clusters. MySQL cluster is a combination of MySQL servers and the NDP storage engine. Uh, data can be stored in both in-memory as well as <coughs> in disk also. It was initially designed for uh, uh, telecom databases where uh, high availability and uh, uh, high performance is key uh, there. And uh, later, after enhancement, it has support uh, for web application, gaming, uh, high storage, uh, servers, etc. Uh, this is MySQL <coughs> cluster in a nutshell. Uh, so uh, yes, MySQL cluster is in-memory, sorry, uh, in-memory database. Auto partitioning, data distribution, replication. These are the built-in features uh, into the MySQL clusters. Users don't have to worry about uh, how my table data will be partitioned, or how the data is distributed across the clusters, and uh, what kind of replication I am currently using. Uh, two type of replications uh, built in it is supported. So that is uh, synchronous replications uh, between within the data nodes of the clusters, uh, while uh, asynchronous replication between the master's uh, cluster to select clusters. MySQL cluster is six nines. That means uh, the less than thirty seconds downtime in a year. Uh, so this has been uh, verified by the customers. It is shared nothing, uh, no data is shared, uh, I mean, uh, across all the nodes. Uh, data is there stored uh, within the, each node store, its own local data, so it's not uh, shared. And no single point of failure. Uh, it can sustain multiple failures uh, at any point of time. Uh, that's why we say no single point of failures. Transactional consistency, it is something like, uh, even if there are, uh, I mean, uh, magical, uh, Cluster supports 40 data nodes and 200 MySQL server connections. And within 200 MySQL servers, you can have millions of queries. So you can uh, transact uh, to the data nodes or the, to the clusters. Uh, and uh, uh, each application is the same data, either a corrupted or a, uh, inconsistent data. It's an open source. It supports both SQL and no SQL. That means you can have a MySQL server along with your NDB. Uh, storage engine uh, and uh, if you are, if you can write your own API programs in C++ or Java or anything, then you can also talk to the MySQL clusters. And read and write scale out, as I said, uh, it supports 200 MySQL uh, clusters, uh, sorry, MySQL servers, so uh, millions of queries you can uh, do read and write at the same time to the clusters. Uh, since data can be stored in a uh, uh, disk, uh, in community hardware, you can store many terabytes of data in a cluster. That is uh, what exactly a cluster. And uh, what is special with MySQL clusters, as I said, it can support a very large database size. With in-memory, you can store many terabytes of data, while in uh, disk, you can store many petabytes of data. Uh, and it said 40, it supports 48 data nodes and 200 MySQL servers. NDB is known for high performance. Within our own benchmarking tools, we found that it supports 200 million uh, reads per second and 1 billion updates per minute in our benchmarking uh, system. Uh, these are the industry uh, currently MySQL clusters play, play mainly telecoms, gaming, online gaming, financial services, web applications, and uh, many high volume storage servers also they are taking uh, MySQL clusters. These are our customers uh, mainly. Uh, yeah, you can see here uh, like uh, telecom uh, uh, players, uh, web applications, and uh, uh, online games, predictions. So let's quickly look at uh, what is the cluster architectures. 
here you can see that a lot of nodes are uh, basically here with a group of nodes here and a group of MySQL nodes, API nodes and other management nodes. The basically the architecture is something like uh, uh, the management server is mainly is responsible for uh, uh, handling cluster-wide configurations. When there is a conflict between data nodes, uh, it acts as an arbitrator to decide who is the president. And uh, it also support, uh, handles logging, cluster-wide logging mechanisms. And uh, there is a uh, 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 client for uh, uh, management server that, that is called ng underscore ngf, that is the client. And you can perform your administrative tasks like you start, stop, restart of a node, start, I mean, shut down of a cluster, backup, recovery, all those administrative tasks you can uh, pass through, the, I mean, you can perform. This management server is responsible for that. And you can give those comments here in the uh, API. We'll see that in the, in the demo slides. Then you, you can see a, a four NDBD, NDBD 1, 2, 3, 4. This is a four node cluster examples given here. And uh, then these are the heart and soul of a clusters, uh, where uh, uh, this uh, actually stores uh, your actual data indexes and each nodes uh, logging uh, also. And uh, this is also performs transactional uh, lookup, uh, like uh, through primary key. Uh, you, when you perform a query, basically it boils down to here, and uh, this decides where my data stores and which nodes, and uh, all these operations take care of here is sufficient. <coughs> then you, you can see that SQL nodes, uh, is, there is a three SQL, minus SQL nodes. This is for the example purpose. You can have many nodes. The main purpose here for MySQL server is to uh, perform. Uh, MySQL uh, queries like create database, create tables, store procedure, events, any any SQL queries, these, these are the layers responsible for that. Then the last layer is called the client and API layers. You can see here that there are so many uh, client, uh, clients are there and uh, API also there. Uh, the, the actual query is submitted in this layer to the cluster. And uh, these layers are responsible for load balancing, uh, data distributions, failover, failback, everything happens in this layer. There is uh, NDB API, this is the API program. It's a native API program for the clusters, and uh, which is written in C++. And uh, this is the only API which, which can talk directly to the NDBD, the cluster data nodes. No other API or MySQL can talk directly to the uh, NDB API. We will see this connection. You can see here. This is your clients, and these are your API layers. You can see that either it is a MySQL server or any of the API like cluster J NDB API, and this is the NDB API layer where the request path uh, pass uh, start with the clients. It passes to the MySQL server, then uh, it passes to the NDB API layer. These layers then to send the request to the data nodes, and uh, it fetches the data and return back to the NDB API. Then back to the SQL nodes or API, then finally it reaches to the uh, clients. So this is the flow of operations. The, the difference between API and MySQL uh, nodes is that since since uh, NDB API is directly talk to the NDBD, so if you uh, the, if you perform any query through API, then your performance is much more better than if you pass through the MySQL because. When you pass the query to the MySQL, it will talk to the send it to the NDB API. NDB API, then finally NDB API go to the data node. So you got got one layer of communications. That's why it, 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 we say that when you perform uh, no SQL or API API, then your performance will be much better than the MySQL servers. Let's look at the few of the features, cluster features here. It supports acid compliance. So like any RDBMS, uh, MySQL cluster acid compliant transactions, auto signings, online operations, and the scale up. There are so many features are there. I just highlighted a few of the key features of our clusters. We'll look at uh, later. Uh, this is the, your auto signing. Uh, auto signing basically, uh, it is inbuilt, as I said. User don't have to worry when you create a data and uh, insert row into it uh, where my data is stored, uh, which partition, which fragment, nothing to worry. It is all bothers of uh, cluster. So when you create, uh, suppose you have a four data nodes, you can see here one, two, three, four. 
based on your number of data nodes, your partition is created automatically. The moment you create a table T1, so it is partition into four partition, P1, P2, P3, P4. So each partition store, uh, store uh, its data into one of the data nodes, like say this one. Partition P1 stores its data in the data node 1, F1 is the primary fragment, while the same data is replicated again in the data node 2, that is called secondary fragment. The same way you can see that all this work, all this partition data are stored in the primary, one is both primary and another is goes to the secondary. So the idea is behind is that if your data node 1 is down, that means this data node 2 have both the data, what the F1 and F3 contains, the same thing is here. So that's why you said that it is it handles uh, it's a no point of I mean no single point of failures. So this data nodes, if you have more nodes and uh, more, uh, more tables, then based upon that, your node group will be created. I can I will show you in uh, demo how these node groups, I mean, what are the node groups is created. By rough calculation, it is basically uh, uh, how many data nodes you have and uh, what is the replica. Replica is basically how many uh, replica of data you want to store. We currently support to two, uh, but up to you can create up to four. That means four, four replica you can store in a box. And uh, cluster also supports uh, online operations. That means these are the case operation you can perform without shutting down your clusters. Like uh, scale, I mean R node. Uh, say uh, your business uh, is suppose you are starting with a small business and the future your business is growing rapidly. Then you can enhance your clusters. Uh, say uh, right, uh, if you started your cluster with a two node clusters and uh, uh, with the latter you decided that let's move to the sixteen node cluster or twenty twenty node clusters. Then you don't have to worry that you have to just add the data nodes into the existing cluster. You can perform all your read, write, all operations. So while these operations, or while these nodes are adding one by one to the existing cluster, data distribution, normalization, everything happens in the background uh, as a background process. It may be a little bit slow with the during that period, but we don't have to shut down the cluster. Make offline add all the data nodes and uh, migrate all the data and the distribution. We don't have to do uh, all those things. That is the unique feature here. Uh, then partition also you can do partitions uh, of a table like you, we saw uh, in the previous slides. Uh, online start, stop, restart nodes. You can start a node, stop a node, and restart a node while the, uh, while the cluster is up and ready. Upgrade, whether it's a OS upgrades or cluster upgrades, you, you can do that without shutting down your, your uh, uh, clusters. Uh, it can happen that suppose you are in 7.4 clusters and you are migrating to 7.6 clusters. You, you can do that half of the nodes are in 7.4 and you have migrated other half of the cluster in 7.6. Within this half of uh, the, I mean, versions, multi versions, you can do your transitions and all the operations. Nothing will happen. No data corruption, no, no issues. Uh, online backup and register, yes, you can take a backup of the clusters and register by cluster is off and running. When I am saying off and running means you can do all your pro proper transactions with the clusters. It's not that, okay, but since uh, upgrades is going on, let's sort of minimize your write operations or the read operations, you don't have to do that. Uh, reconfiguration, basically, uh, like as I said, so when you move from one person to other person, you might change a few of the configuration parameters. So you can add those config parameters to the existing config.ina, which is the cluster configuration files. And uh, you can do a rolling restart, uh, which will take care of uh, everything, and uh, while uh, everything happens during the cluster uh, up and running. So when to consider magical clusters? Uh, mainly, we, uh, if you, I mean, customers are looking into mainly these three points, uh, scalability, latency, and the downtime. Scalability, as I said, that when your business is growing, uh, uh, then you should think about that. When, when your response, uh, you, are, you are looking for a high response time or downtime, as I said, that it's a six nines, that means 30 second downtime in a year. If these are the critical parameters for, you, uh, for your business, then probably you can do, uh, think of our magical clusters. Then let us set up a NDV clusters. Uh, 
I am considering here a four node cluster, that means one, man, one management node, four data nodes, and one MySQL servers. <coughs> uh, for illustrative purpose, I have just shown here uh, data one node, one, two, three, four, these are four, these are all physical hosts. Because there is no point in running a cluster in a single host of everything in the same host. And uh, this is your cluster, cluster log, this is the management client, actually it is a management server, but I am running a management client on it, and uh, this is a MySQL server and running MySQL client. I will issue the respective commands in, uh, in all these hosts. Uh, you can get the source code from the GitHub and you can build your code or if you don't want to do that, you can download the Appium Tarpon from these locations and uh, once you either either of these, you will get the binaries of the clusters. So once you get the binaries, then the next step is to prepare the configuration files. The two configuration files are required basically. One is mind of CNF, uh, which is basically MySQL server specific. Another is config.ini, which is the cluster specific. Mind.cnf is standard mind.cnf files where you basically have to mention the IP address of the management nodes, uh, then user username, port, sockets, and rest directory. In config.ini, here you can uh, mention what is my mind management node, its uh, IP address and node ID, where I will store the log list log files, then data node 1 up to data 2, 3, and 4, or username IP address. So these configuration files, you can get it from this manual uh, online, you can get this configuration and the change accordingly uh, as per your requirement. Next step is to install the MySQL servers. You can see that uh, your MySQL server, is in, uh, this is the command to install the MySQL server. From the MySQL client, I am using these commands and you can see that yes, MySQL server is installed. Uh, then the next step is to start the clusters. There is a sequence, particular sequence you need to mention that uh, uh, your management nodes should be start first, then all the data nodes, then all next uh, all the MySQL servers. So the management nodes, uh, you can start the management nodes uh, from the management client. You can issue these commands uh, to start the management uh, server. Now here you can see that MySQL cluster management server. This is the MySQL person. This is the NDB person. This started. Then check the status of the management node. Basically, from the management client, this is the management client NDB underscore NGM. This is the process. And uh, from here, uh, so is the command which will show you what is the status of my cluster. Now just to see that these are the four data nodes which is not started or not running. This is the management node. You can see that it is running under none of the MySQL or API is running here. Let's start all the data nodes. This is the command to start the start a data nodes. And uh, from data node 1, 2, 3, 4, you can see that I am issuing these commands. And uh, you can see that all are started. Let's check the status of the data nodes. Here you can see that it is not started, not started, not started. Let's start the <coughs> each of the <coughs> data node from the uh, management client. That is the ID is four start. That four is the ID or node ID of the first node, like five and six and seven. So you st just start the, all this uh, from the management clients, and you can see that all are started, started, started. Let's check. Uh, let's look at the uh, status of the MySQL, uh, uh, all the data nodes. So you, here you can see that all the all the data nodes are started. Two node groups are created, 0 and 2, 1, and uh, management node is started. The next step is to start the MySQL server. This is the command to start the MySQL server, and from the my, my, MySQL client, I have given this command, uh, MySQL. And here, check the status. Yes, this is MySQL server is running. So, this is now your cluster, four node cluster is off and running. All the data nodes have started. These are the four API nodes uh, uh, are uh, waiting for the connection to start. Let's do some transaction on it. And uh, uh, to do that, let, uh, let's start the MySQL client here. This is the command to start the MySQL client. Create a database, test one. And create a table inside it after and do some, uh, insert some rows. Uh, I have inserted six, seven rows. Then uh, perform a uh, select operation to see how many road, uh, records are there. You can see that one, two, six, seven. Three. So at this point, yeah, our cluster is up and running. We, we did some transaction also. 
let's look at uh, the one of the key features of self filling uh, for clusters the idea of self filling is that if a node is crashed it will start automatically you just don't have to bother about that or uh, um, basically if, uh, when it starts you, you should not worry about it, i mean how to start it and all. so let's do a ps minus ef uh, for ndv mtd that is the uh, ndvd process do it <coughs> Do a kill minus nine. This is the process ID of this uh, uh, NDVD. So let's see how it happens. Now you can see that node four, first node shut down computer is starting auto start with you. Basically, we have killed this node ID four. This one we have killed, and uh, now see you can see that it's not connected, accepting, uh, uh, and all the three are still off and running. After some time, so you can see that it is starting automatically. You user don't have to worry about that. Then you can see that node is starting. So, if you check the status of the uh, status of the uh, cluster, now all the four nodes are started. That means uh, you can do the same thing with multiple nodes. Uh, it will automatically start after some time. So, the another feature is called uh, no, uh, no single point of failure. That means you can cross multiple nodes at the same time and the cluster is, cluster is uh, will survive. No data loss, nothing. Let's kill uh, one of the data nodes. Uh, you can see that one, one data node uh, ID is called to, uh, is called to four uh, crash. Then kill one more data node from the node, node group three, node group one. Uh, here, one point is that you cannot crash both the nodes are from the same node group. That means cluster is completely shut down. That means there is no way you can recover unless you have a backup already left in place. So one, uh, that's why you said, when you say that uh, I have two uh, replica is equal to two, that means two copy are there. If you say I have a replica is equal to three, that means in this node group zero, there will be node ID four, five, and six all belongs to zero. Then six, seven, eight belongs to node group one. That means I can kill four and five uh, and uh, six uh, and seven from both the groups. Cluster is still of survive no data loss and uh, no issues. So this is this is this is the typical scenario where half of the cluster is down and half of the cluster is up and running. Uh, so you can check that half cluster is uh, uh, your uh, down and uh, half is running. Let's do some transition whether we are able to see some transition or not. Let's uh, go to go back to the same table uh, actor uh, and uh, let's do some select operations. Select start from actor where actor ID is five and we paste this data. So that means when cluster is uh, in half clusters down, we can perform our transition. This is a simple query I see just to show I have done that. But we, we can do a heavy uh, transition uh, or loads in the cluster by half cluster is still down. So MySQL 10 next is the cluster resources. Uh, this is the uh, link where you can download the uh, cluster uh, binaries, uh, manuals, configuration, everything. So. And question and answer. support multiple work, I mean, uh, heterogeneous uh, environment, but uh, it's not hardware.